Early start is gonna help him secure his win here because if he didn't have it, uh, he definitely struggled going into the mid game when those patrons come down. But at the moment, he has a lot of uh, leverage on the board, and Robin doesn't really have answers to either of these minions at the moment. No, it's definitely a little bit rough, and uh, holding on to the coin like this is nice. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you actually even do? If you drop an armor smith, it's just 100% dead. And probably gain two armor, but that's it. Yeah, it doesn't seem great, but you need to contest these minions to some point. I mean, if the knife juggler does decide to go in on uh, the armor smith, uh, you can in a rage at least to take it out, but um, it's double knife juggler. Hmm. I mean, he's a lot of choices here. What? What? Do you, I don't think Muster's kind of the right way to go just yet. Um, Cock hammer, perhaps. I don't even mind playing the coin shredder. See if the juggle hits the one four. If it does, trade the uh, knife juggler. And if it doesn't, uh, you can just trade anyway. I'll just go face and ignore the armor smith. There's a lot of options actually. Uh, you could hit with a zombie chow and then cog hammer. But it looks like he's. Uh gonna use double knife juggler here and then coin out mini bot and this board is very deadly yeah and we see there's no death bite which is the issue here um if he draws death bite he's got something and that would be amazing draw turn four and called it uh yeah so death bite now now the game sort of can swing the other way he can kill off one juggler and then he can kick go into the um into the What's the word I'm looking for? The Zombie Chow uh, next. If maybe Zombie Chow Cog Hammer is a play just to make the next hit really awkward. I, I kind of like that, to be honest. Uh, although he might just shred her just for some kind of board security. But I think uh, you don't want these Zombie Chows sitting in your hand for the rest of the game, do you? I mean, if, you need to play it now if you're going to play it at any point. So I think the Cog Hammer is uh, pretty nice. Especially if it hits the Knife Juggler as well. It just makes it so awkward. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any issue with that. A shredder's fine as well, I think. It depends what he values more, I guess. Uh, but overall, I would just want to get another zombie chow down, get the cog hammer on top of something. But shredder looks like it's going to come down instead. Just create a bit of board security. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, it's just whether the paladin now has enough to actually push through. Uh, I think the warrior needs to definitely play armor smith and do uh, battle rage. Yeah, that seems definitely good. needs to draw into something else at the moment. The warrior's got a chance of still coming back, but well, the zombie chair is definitely going to help him sustain. I mean, getting a second zombie chair was such a whiff draw, and you can see that uh, if you look at Overcast, he's just blown out of sight. Then he seems a bit nervous as well. There's a lot on the line for him. Battle rage. So he still hasn't found a patron warrior, but he does get another death bite, so that's a very good pickup for him. Yeah, that's gonna be really nice actually. Just needs to do something to just just needs just needs to make it work. Like just needs a couple more draws and he'll be fine. If you can go into patron then this game could well be over just from that point. Although that is a fantastic pickup for him. And the Argus. Play Zombie Chow. Uh, can Argus it up as well, so forcing him to, say, use another charge on the Death Spite. Protects his uh, Paladin Shredder as well, clears a minion, and that's a, a very solid board position for Overcast. Yeah, uh, this is going to be really difficult, and without... Uh, Whirlwind's okay, like, Whirlwind... He, I mean, you could do some work with Whirlwind in a Rage in a Rage Ghoul. Um, but... It's just whether that's too much resource uh, for the, over the next turn or so to actually put into it. Um, the Shredder's again another good drop, and can he actually. Oh, it's a shame he's just shot a sh Shredder car camera, that would have been insane. Yeah, it's just not quite enough to do that, unfortunately. I guess he just uh, sacrifices something here. So I guess he can s just run the weapon in and. Use the Argus. He keeps his mini bot alive as well. But it still dives to the death spite. But there's a divine shield on the shredder, so it does make things a little awkward. 
Oh, hang on. Why is he doing it that way? He, oh, he's going to lose... Well, yeah, he's going to lose the... Device. Yeah, he'll, he'll take the one damage anyway from the ghoul. So I think he... Whatever he wants to do. ...done this in a weird order. I think he should have sacrificed his... Uh, his mini bot there, and then played Cog Hammer, and then got the shield, and that would have made things a lot more awkward for Robin. Yeah, maybe didn't think about it too much. Twelve health though. He's uh, bleeding pretty uh, heavily here, especially for turn six against a mid-range paladin, like a, a deck that's not really known for being as aggressive as this. I mean, I... it's definitely rough. Do you need to like whirlwind in a rage? To see what the shredder drops, Potentially. then you can then you can maybe hit face and clear. The problem is if he whirlwinds, then maybe he needs to double in a rage because it still gives him the chance to play boom. It feels terrible, but maybe you double in a rage yeah. on the shredder. Maybe. Oh, it is rough. Because if, if you don't, you potentially dead next turn. Unless he lets the boom bots do some work here. In a rage, boom bots. Can he take four damage though? I suppose he might be able to. Yep, it looks like he's going for the, the boom bots. Oh! No! <laughs> we need to we know need, what happens! We need to see what happens with the boom bots. What's going on? Alright, I'll just wait up for that to catch up a moment. Uh, perhaps the feed has gone down. Let's. See if I can get this back up for you guys. Yeah, we're actually just uh, piggybacking off the China feed, so um, so we uh, we don't have much control over production and the changeovers and everything. So this kind of stuff, unfortunately, it happens. We're just going to refresh the page and see if we can get the stream back. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Not oh. the best timing. We agree. <laughs> I'm getting the washing machine on the on my browser in a minute. Um, all right, okay. Perhaps the feed has gone down. So, well, this is actually a feed from Starlad himself. Ah, it's back up now, guys. No worries. So, okay, so he isn't dead. So I'm guessing the boom bots cleared some of the minions there. You know, he's on six health now. He can armor up. It's back up to eight, and now the paladin is top decking after the after the sludge belcher is played. So, and that's that's a threatening board uh, for a paladin to deal with without consecrate. Oh, equality's not gonna quite do it either. I guess he could equality and then play Sludge Belcher, but still that Frothing Berserkin's gonna grow and grow and start just doing so much damage. Yeah, this is definitely rough. And there's actually this is the issue, how does the paladin actually end the game? That is a, a big question mid-range paladin's been asking for a long time, I think. Uh, it's not been a not being easy. Uh, he just clears that. So he forces. He's trying to force the Frog and Berserker into the Sludge Belcher. This is actually a, a good way to deal with it. Yep. And what's the warrior going to draw? Shield block. Okay. Well, that makes him a little bit safer and cycles. So that's not too bad. Is he? Does he want to play Grom though? I don't think you need to. I think you just need to stabilize at this point. He can kill the Belcher. And there's only like three damage off board. Like, you should be fine with the shield block. Problem the shield block though, if it gets a whiff draw, like I don't know, um, a whirlwind What's he got or left, something. Though? Like we've already seen like whirlwind double in a rage, like we, the bits we've not seen are the minions. This is like patrons, for example. Yeah. yeah. He looks like he wants to cycle. I can see why, to be honest. He does like I said, stabilize even more. So he executes. See, that's just a. Uh... That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It means, the, uh, means the means the doesn't die. Although that equality is going to be doing some work, I can imagine, next turn. And uh, Frovin is uh, probably going to go down. 15 2 Frovin Berserker. Ouch. Need a good draw here. Minibot's not brilliant, but it's not terrible. Still stable minion for now. Is it time to throw the equality? I, I think it is. Yeah, I think he just has to, because you don't know what's in hand. If there's like uh, you know something else to prop some damage, it could get really rough. So equality, trade, dude, mini bar, and back to top deck mode for uh, four overcast. Although uh, I would say Robin's kind of in a similar situation. He just has a win condition uh, in his hand eventually, but it's not probably going to be used for board control, I imagine. 
Yeah, it's all relative of what there gets picked up. He's working out if you can take 15. That's what he's trying to deal with here. Can I take 15 damage and save equality? No. <laughs> Although now we can see that he can pretty much play Grom freely. He can just Grom face. That's going to be the only equality as well. Nine health is going to be a bit of a struggle for the Paladin to deal with. And unless he picks up like a BGH and can activate his Enrager, uh, Grom might just stick around for a bit. Oh, oh. he can even slam the shield as yeah, well. Yeah, Grom slam seems nice actually. Another cycle coming through. Another execute as well. Just clear the mini bot. And now there's a 10 7 on the board this Paladin has to deal with. Oh, what a perfect answer! Wow, what a top deck there for Overcast. Yeah, Robin, visibly disappointed. That's not really what you want. And the problem is it doesn't like re-enrage either once you hit. Because it's, uh, it's already enraged at one health. There's yeah. Berserker. Um, if he plays Berserker, it does die though. That took to the minions on board, never mind the weapon. So it's a little bit uh, upset. A little bit frustrating for... Uh, Robin there. Yeah, it's just not quite enough as far as minions go. But this is the problem now. What does Robin have in his deck that will be able to match some of the mid-range Paladin's threats that are going to be coming up? Because he's used so many whirlwind effects. Uh, patrons uh, may not be as viable. Two death spites, two inner rages, definitely one whirlwind. Uh, did he use unstable ghoul as well? Uh, he's used one. I don't know if he has one or two in the deck. Oh, I don't know. Some issues with the feed again, guys. I will get this back up. Ah, there we go. Ah, that's not a bad draw either, so... He can take four damage here, I think, and just trade uh, one of his free frees in. I think taking four damage isn't an issue at all. And yeah, I guess you keep... You definitely keep the token just for Quartermaster. And yep, this is fine. Face. And this might be too much to deal with now. It's quite back and forth at the moment, but that Alder Peacekeeper could potentially just lock him out of the game. Although we can Cruel Taskmaster and start trading to the free free. Uh, but yeah, that Alder top deck was so big. Yeah, it's definitely tough. Um, he's got the execute, but it's probably just not worth it. That's the problem. Mm, is he going to Cruel Task? Yep, he's going to do that. So he gets a trade here. Scrom can actually do something other than clear tokens now. Uh, it's not much of a threat though for Overcast. Especially now he picked up True Silver Champion. And uh, he can just deal with the board again. Uh, yep, yeah, I think that's right. You can just uh, trade into 2-2 two -two with D3-4. Uh, use the weapon to Grom, keep and then token up, and then this is the problem. The warrior's going to struggle to do. The tokens will kill him eventually, right? That's the uh, that's the real problem here. Yep, and that's a, a a problem warrior generally has against paladin. Even the control warriors, the tokens uh, just provide a bit too much of a nuisance overall. Because the more tokens you get, and the less they can deal with your armor, and that won't overpower an army of tokens. The warrior's gonna actually struggle here. Um, oh, I struggled with this matchup just because the paladin was just uh, on curve pretty hard. Oh wow! Do we see brawl and then execute for the three-two if it survives? <laughs> oh my! So grim right now. Just an execute. Okay. Yeah. So Robin's really struggling with this warrior. It's gonna be. Ooh. He just executes and saves the brawl. Oh, can brawl muster? It's okay, guys. It's okay. He can brawl six tokens and hopefully be happy with that result. Oh, man. This is... I don't think Robin can win this game now. Even after the brawl, I just I don't think he's got anything he can draw that can bring him back. Five health. Remaining, no, not drawing anything of relevance. Uh, Battle Rage, okay, might be able to find something. 
Firewax, not it. Well, you can clear up you the one. You can throw one. a war axe, it's fine. <laughs> oh, oh how God. long can you hold on for? It's just going to go into fatigue, right? Oh, a 1 1 survived. What a surprise. Never saw it coming. <laughs> Do I, I mean, want... he has to axe the 1-1. One, one. It's not a surprise to take it this long. Hmm. How does he win? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Let me know, Robin. Oh, wow. Oh, Imagine if there yeah. wasn't a brawl. That yeah, this is just game, I think, though, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing can do against the Paladin now. Yep, that is game. First game to go what, a, what a long drawn out top deck game. Uh, the warrior normally good at uh, good at drawing all through the deck and uh, having the card advantage, just uh, failing a little bit there. And yeah, Robin loses the first game with his warrior. I mean, he'll be pretty okay with having Page on warrior again. I imagine we'll, we should see it locked in one more time, just because it's a pretty strong deck overall. So it could take a win. Should be okay. That old of a peacekeeper changed everything. Uh, the equality was. Pretty strong going on that big Froven Berserker, and he had a, a good Grom setup going forward, but once that Alder Peacekeeper came off the top, it was just game over from then, I think, for Robin, straight from that moment. He just n ha didn't have anything left to really leverage the Paladin, especially since the Paladin still had some really powerful draws coming up. Yeah, it's looking uh, not looking too great, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see what we lock into the next one. Uh, I'm not sure what classes these guys have. We've cast, because th there's so many decks across this whole tournament. It's actually quite difficult to remember who's played what. I think I remember Robin. So he has uh, he has the patron. He has Zulok. No, no, no. Patron, Agro Shaman, Secret Paladin, Midrange Druid. And Overcast has his Midrange Druid, his Zulok, his Handlock. And he has another deck, which is quite a standout one. Face Hunter. Ah, oh, okay, right, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. It's all coming back to me now. That's the excuse I'm rolling with. <laughs> so the Druid's going to be coming out for uh, Robin here. Try and get a win with that. Uh, it's definitely a deck you queue in if you just want to try and sneak in a win. As for uh, Overcast, I'm curious what he will play next. I think Face Hunter would be a, quite a good pick for him. Uh, yeah, if he if he gollocks face hunter, this can do pretty well. Um, just to it's, it's a similar way to any like high progressive deck works versus druid. Obviously, druid can stabilize, but uh, being able to just burst through that quickly is sometimes too fast for the druid. But it looks like it is going to be his handlock. We saw him uh, play this to great success in the last set. I'll see if he can do it again. A little bit more difficult against druid, I think. Yeah, it's a kind of a bad matchup, but. Uh, the demon version uh, definitely has a bit more stability, especially uh, with stuff like Malganus. But not only that, Doomguard, of course, is another card that can help uh, deal with some of the many 5-5s five that uh, the Druid has. And even Jaraxxus to some extent. If you get Jaraxxus on the board and you get uh, an Argus or a Sunfury on him, it can be a bit of a nightmare for a Druid to sil if, he has to, if he hasn't got the silence available to him. So it looks yeah. like we're ready, guys. Handlock versus Midrange Druid. This is a, a matchup that was very popular before the Patron nerf because the, the most solid lineup was uh, Midrange Druid, Patron Warrior, and Demon Handlock. And throughout the World Championship qualifiers, we saw a lot of those lineups going for being taken by professional players. So this is kind of a an old school match, a, a, a pre Patron uh, nerf era kind of a uh, matchup we're going for. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Having the uh, having the um, mountain giant for turn four, as well as the void caller, he does have a couple of options now, which is always nice. Um, Ooh, innovates could pick up. Yeah, does he? What does he want to innovate out though? The shredder maybe, or does he want to hold off for turn seven play? I would probably hold out off on the shredder for now. Uh, I definitely want something a bit more bulky and something a bit more threatening. Uh, he has a lot of turn seven plays there, like you said. Uh, easy turn here. Tap, draw more cards, play that mountain giant next turn, and let's see if uh, Robin can find an answer. Big game hunter, of course, is uh, his more solid answer, but he's going to need some minions if he wants to challenge this giant. Yep, it's definitely going to be tough. He just needs to drink the BGH, as he said, so I 
think just playing the shredder's okay. Yeah, shredder. Maybe even Sylvanas will be okay actually. Well, at least with the shredder now, when the giant comes down, he can swipe and trade, right? I guess that's what he's maybe thinking about. If a giant is going to come down this turn, I want to have an answer to it. Yeah, that's true. And the giant does come down, so uh, Robin is sitting on a, a good answer to it, and he will get an, he will keep board as well because Shredder's going to give him another minion. So, yep, things are looking okay for Robin so far. Oh wow, that's a great minion as well, one of the best. Yep, getting mini bot out of Shredder's pretty reasonable most of the time. <laughs> There's not much else you normally want from that. Another innovate, so we can now innovate our Ancient of Law. To draw some cards, you can innovate some, an Ancient of War. Uh, but I guess Law is definitely going to come down here in case he draws uh, something a bit more deadly to innovate out next turn. Yeah, and the thing is, you don't really need the Taunt at the moment. That's the that's the key. You uh, ra much rather value the card draw over the Taunt, as there's not too much pressure on board anyway. Hmm. Do we see a tap here? Maybe. Uh, you can Dark Bomb. And then trade to five five, and he gets another void caller down. But if he taps first, uh, he can't dart bomb. But he might want to find another demon. So quite a few decisions to be made here, and that's kind of handlock for you, right? Lots of very intricate decisions that need to be made. Oh yeah, it's um, it's definitely a deck that you know uh, people who like control of like slower decks and actually playing with a lot of cards. So the opposite of hunter. Uh, people who like that kind of deck always love handlock. It's the same with like normally people like like control warrior as well. Things like that that you actually have a lot of time in the game to make multiple decisions. And the idea uh, that a lot of people, especially at life coach, thinks is that the more decisions that have to be made in a match, uh, and the longer the game goes on, means that the better players should win because they can make the best decisions more consistently and more often. Yeah, I agree with that. Siphon Soul comes down on the 5-5. Five five. Uh, Sylvanas is going to be a little bit of a pain, especially with no silence at the moment. Um, hmm, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty frustrating. Because even if he was, to say, Hellfire to get rid of it as well, uh, the Void Caller's Death Rattle would go off first, and then the Sylvanas, so he would uh, steal a demon. So, a bit, a bit of a tough situation Ooh. here. Yeah, I don't particularly mind be uh, just playing Boom at this point. Like, why not? Like, nothing else is good. You can't clear Sylvanas well, so you just may as well make the strongest play possible. And Dr. Boom comes into Robin's hand as well. So he has the option of Boom himself. Uh -huh. Boom versus Boom. <laughs> boom battles. So we can run maybe the mini bot into a bomb, then hero power the other bomb, and then Sylvanas into the free four. And if a boom bot hits Sylvanas, uh, he'll be able to steal potentially what comes out or the dot the boom. But he definitely wants the dot the boom over that. He'll have five mana left, and he'll be able to innovate out an ancient of war or his own dot the boom. So. Uh, that uh, innovates given a lot of uh, versatility at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, snipe there. It's just whether he. Hmm. He needs to make decisions quick. He's going for the silence. Is that something in the kill on the void? Okay. Oh, he's going for the boom bot here. Alright, let's see if this boom bot's going to give a dot the boom over to Robin. Ooh, no. But Savannah's still around, and she's still making some noise. Yeah, there's definitely a, you know, it's still on the ball, like you said, and this Doctor Boom still isn't safe from Sylvanas, because it's pretty easy to kill her now. I guess he could Shadow Flame? But that seems really wasteful. Uh, I don't know, attack Shadow Flame, you get 7 damage, what can he follow up with? Attack Shadow Flame Void Caller? Seems yeah. okay. Yeah. Seven damage to the face, so he'd be taking down a 15. The Void Caller doesn't have any targets in hand, but Robin doesn't know that. And he did silence one of them, them originally, so he is afraid of it. He, he does definitely respect Void Caller, and that respect uh, might just be enough for Overcast to kind of get the board back here.
Who's going to play the bug on what? Taunt them up? I think this is a bit ropey. You're just letting Sylvanas, like, do whatever. Do whatever she wants. Interesting. Uh, I mean, he could just run. Um, what's he got? I'm just thinking he could. Hmm. See if there's a way. So we can. He could, so he could silence the uh, the seven seven. Play Druid of the Claw. Run Sylvanas into two three after running the Druid of the Claw into the three four. Yeah. That's a way you could do it. With it with innovate, of course. So yeah, silence. Yeah, running that. Yeah, that's that is definitely a way he could do it. If he definitely wants a Doctor Boom. Uh, yeah, well, why not? Cause then he, then if he BGH is it, you just play your Doctor Boom. Yeah, I kind of like that. And you're still threatening a lot of damage. And the Warlocks, you know, next turn's turn nine, so you could just, you know, you're just threatening combo. He's just gonna do a bit of a simple clear. He steals a two three, and then plays the Boom anyway, but. I don't know. I like to stay on the 7-7. Seven, seven. He's going to play his own Dr. Boom here, and it's going to get BGH'd, and this is going to give Overcast an opportunity to get the board back. Now he has a Mortal Coil to cycle one of the... One of the boom. I might, I might want to tap first. Yeah, the problem now with the Warlock is because he's not got any good taunts up. He's got to defend against combo. So his two ma Molten Giants are pretty pointless at the moment. It's kind of sucks. Yeah, Robin's just keeping him at a health total where he can't Molten Giant. But he's keeping him at a health total where it's still dangerous that combo can take him out. I mean, what he could do is... Yeah, hit that guy. He can Mortal Coil. Uh, hopefully he'll cycle into a Demon. Doesn't find a Demon. And oh, it stays alive. You can low feb, uh, and you can low feb after this as well. Yeah, that's that's a good play. Uh, it does uh, lock out the combo for next turn, and he does develop quite a threatening board. Yep, this is looking pretty nice for the warlock. Uh, double dart, uh, yeah, double dart bombs still a good amount of damage as well. Like double dart bomb hellfire will easily be enough to kill him if he doesn't do something about this pretty quick. Although he's missing the owl for the Ancient of War. Second oh, silence on the Void Caller, but Void Callers had no targets. So this has worked out really nicely for Overcast so far. Druid to the Claw, I imagine, is going to be the next thing to follow up here. I mean. Yeah, he you know, almost has to now. Yeah, there's not much else he can play. I mean, he could play Shade Aspirant, but. Is that really enough? I don't know, Shade Spiram might work, but it's very vulnerable to Hellfire. Uh, but if he Hellfired, it would, it would happen to his own minions as well. Very, very vulnerable to just dying as well. Yeah. And there's the Doom Guard, so that would have been nice a little bit early with a Void Coiler. Well, Dark Bomb is going to be able to help him clear with just the big game hunter keeping his low feb alive, but he doesn't really have anything else to go with it apart from a Farsia. Yeah, it might be worth tapping here, trying to find a, a good power play. Yeah. Uh, he's still got to be careful of his health, though. I mean, he can heal back up. I kind of like a double dart bomb onto the uh, onto the Druid of the Claw. Uh, then you can, you could if you want, just trade in. That'll be four. Maybe du du double dart bomb Druid of the Claw, trade the 4-2 into the 2-4, and then play Doomguard. And you push for 10, and you're still on 21. Yeah, that sounds good. Very aggressive as well and it puts a lot of pressure down but it looks like Twilight Drake uh, takes more of a fancy here for Overcast. Uh, double Dart Bomb. Yeah, it still goes to the Double Dart Bomb play. And now yep, this is fine. puts him on 11. I mean, he does have lethal through uh, Hero Power anyway if he doesn't play Taunt, so this is still okay. And he has enough damage to actually punch through the uh, the 710. Uh, the 510, sorry. Get to play a shade as well. We might see a Hellfire come here because Lofeb's going to go down anyway. Oh, Malganis. No demons to buff though. Hmm. If 
five, three. Still needs two damage to find on the. So we can he can Hellfire. Uh, but he'll kill us Drake in the process. Oh, his, no, his Drake will be on one health. Unless he plays Doomguard. Doomguard Doom might be okay. He keeps the Drake alive. Doomguard, see what what's left and then deal with it afterwards. I think that's pretty okay. Hmm. Both Dark Bombs are gone. Mortal Coil would be perfect, I suppose, but... Don't know if, to, if it's worth tapping for it at this point, especially with the Druid. Goes for the Shadow Flame. Into the Doom Guard. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. I like the Doom Guard. Keeps him on No matter what well. you throw, you're still going to have something reasonable left. Uh, so he had a pretty okay hand for all that. But Force of Nature is actually going to win the game for him here. With the Innovate double. Ah, uh, so all that work done by the Warlock. Yeah. Thrown away just because of this crazy combo that Druid has access to. Yeah, and there's not much he actually could have done there either. I mean, I think Overcast played that really well. He played it really patiently. Uh, but it literally just comes down to Druid being a Druid. All yeah, right. sometimes you just got to deal with that, and it kind of sucks. But it's going to even the match. These are two really long games we've had so far. Wow, we're going to be here all day, guys. Well, these guys have a lot to play for, I guess. Uh, you might as well play out as long as you can and make sure you're confident in your decisions because the loser, this goes home and he's not going to be able to uh, qualify. So, yeah, I can, I can, I can sympathise with these guys taking some time, just figuring out everything they can do. Yeah. So the druid is now gone for that was for thingy, wasn't it? For Robin. For Robin. Yeah. Yeah. The double. That's like. The third, maybe fourth, double combo we've seen uh, in the past three days. That's quite a lot. Yeah, we've seen a lot of kind of burst damage coming from Druids because of kind of Innovates and Forasons. I mean, we saw earlier 28 damage come from combo on from Love CEX, just being able to uh, force on two Force of Natures and a Savage Roar. And we know how an Innovate as well, so 28 damage was a bit ridiculous, but you know, it's Druid for you. Yeah, we all uh, we all know Drew, what Druid's like. We don't get upset anymore. We're just like you, you either love him, <laughs> love him or hate him. That's the uh, that's the issue, I think. Yeah, we're just like love him if you're playing him, hate him if you're against. <laughs> all right, so Warlock's still available. Druid's not available, so both of these players have the potential to change their decks. I uh, can probably see maybe Robin if he reads the Warlock coming back in, maybe going for the Aggro Shaman, uh, and his other deck. If I remember rightly, a zoo. So yeah, I wouldn't mind him sticking with the warlock, uh, the, the actual handlock. I think that's okay. Yeah, if he sticks with the handlock, uh, it's best for Robin. But maybe queuing an aggro deck like aggro shaman, which can get him a, a sneaky win as well. Uh, queuing in patron would just be awful for him because that handlock will destroy patron. I mean, handlock was a good matchup for patron of old. Uh, oh, it's a bad match for patron of old, but patron could still win. But nowadays, like, I don't think Handlock will ever lose the patron. And yeah. it looks like he's cute the face hunter. Yep, this is fine. Uh, kind of, I'm guessing if he's expecting the, because uh, this is Robin's. Oh, no, this isn't Robin's. They're doing it the opposite way around from the bracket. This is Overcast Hunter, so he's switched. And, oh, wow, a very aggressive matchup here. We have Aggro Hunter versus uh, Aggro Shaman. You talking about and long then, games? This ain't going to be long. <laughs> yeah, this shouldn't be too long unless they decide to just trade all game. But, uh, but yeah, the explosive traps are relatively important, but as we said earlier, Shaman has a lot of cards that actually don't die from explosive traps, So, and even the heal totem can actually alter that and just uh, push the health back up again to make it even more awkward to deal with. It's going to be a, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for the Hunter, actually. Well, Overcast just won versus uh, Sword earlier. Sword was an aggro Shaman as well, and I think he was... Was it one damage off lethal? I think Sword was, and then... Uh, was it one damage Which, off? It was very close. It was a very yeah, close yeah. I think game, it was like what it? two. I think it was two. Yeah. So you know he's played this matchup today already. So I guess he has that kind of fresh experience in his mind. That's yeah, not a bad so, hand for Overcast at all. Not bad. Yeah, he's got one, two, three. Um, well, one, two, two, three now. Uh, and the one flame to him might actually do some work this game. Yeah. As it's frustrating to have to deal with a 3 health minion that isn't doing any damage to you directly, but you have to deal with it. Uh, so you're just putting damage there, which is unavoidable because it gives so much value. 
uh, but you're not actually killing your opponent as the aggro deck, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, you kind of have to deal with it. Uh, oh, Trog would have been better last turn. I guess he'll go for the Trog now. And the Earthshock and push for damage on face. That's good. I like the Earthshock here. It's not going to find much use. No real taunts in a face hunter deck. Quick shot, yeah, I can imagine, comes down here. Yeah, and this is the issue. Now you sort of, you kind of have to quick shot the 1 3 because Foul Spirit might come out. Uh, and then you have to, then you may as well run the 1 1 into the 2 1. So then you've just spent your turn trading. Uh, you're a bit further behind on health. And now you've got to rely on your opponent not actually having much. And you can see that even Totem Gone's okay. Oh, wow, what a pickup there. So the board gets completely uh, filled back up. Uh, with two very bulky minions, and then he has Flame Tongue to him. He's probably going to have to uh, use the weapon here to clear the Trog, but then again, the aggro deck's in trading mode, and you never want to be. You want to be able to take the initiative and be as ag aggressive as possible. So it's uh, yeah, pretty tough for Overcast here. Uh, he could quick shot Lepinome. I guess that's another option for him there. Uh, that kind of uh, gives him a bit of board at least. And then he has a Lepinome and a weapon to clear the Totem Golem. But once again, uh, I'd like to mention that he shouldn't be trading here. He needs to be he needs to be fighting, uh, getting some damage on uh, Robin. It's not looking good. Yeah, yeah not, none of the options are great here actually, are they? You don't want to trade, do you? No. So Lepinome quick shot, I think, is going to be the play here. And then he has the weapon if he needs to clear up that totem gone later. Yeah, the only benefit here is the shaman's running out of cards, and if he doesn't draw ancestral knowledge, then like he's gonna just hero power every turn, which means unleash gets like ridiculously good later on. And if you can draw into juggler, then juggler unleash can swing it the game really hard. Free damage or trade and protect your totem. I like no, I think that's fine. Oh, scientist is a good pickup. Now he's swarming the board. No need shaming stone to uh, run lightning storms. Yep, there are no AoE cards in the deck. Uh, there's Ancestral Knowledge though, so that's probably going to help. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, he kind of needs Feral Spirit, and uh, there we go. Straight off the top. And the pressure's but, still on here. Yeah. yeah, the good thing is he can run in, and he can unleash if he really wants, or he can just straight up take out... Uh, what's the best way here? He can bow... Creeper, bow one down, trade two in, probably the scientist and the wargan. He's going to unleash, actually. So, does he want a full board clue? Maybe. I don't know if he'll ever get a better unleash than this. Uh, that's true, yeah. So, maybe just taking advantage of that. Because uh, the aggro shaman generally plays a lot of uh, minions at the start, and then it just kills you from hand. Uh, so, maybe he's considering. Um, this might be the only time he gets a decent unleash. And now this is an opportunity for him to start putting pressure on his life. Uh, oh, I'm surprised he traded yeah, the Warden. I wouldn't, because I don't the problem like is, like, he can kill the 1-1 one -one now, because he knows it's explosive. And then if he rolls Healing Totem, he can just hold off a little bit, if he needs to. Uh, I don't know, I don't really like that. No, I didn't like that at all. You need to start putting pressure. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that's not putting pressure on your opponent. That's just putting pressure on the board, which he doesn't care about as much anymore. Healing to um nope spell power that's still fine it still uh, gives him a lot of reach so now the thing tables have turned just a little bit here uh, he's still gonna trade though why why would you trade here he's trading too much for a face hunter it's... I suppose the idea is I mean he's not gonna attack okay he just wants to leverage hero power I think. Because at the moment, his hero power is doing uh, two every turn. Uh, so he just wants to leverage that. But I don't know. He, he could be a bit more aggressive. I'd be surprised if he doesn't use the bow. What's he keeping the bow for? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even be too upset if he killed the spell power totem. Maybe not yet, because he's still on 20. But maybe if he takes some more damage this turn, the spell power totem needs to die. So I think some spells should be flying here. You use it, take advantage of this totem. Crackle as well. Lightning bolt as well. Oh man, hit seven, five. That's pretty good. 
and then play Nepponome, and then he's got three health left. He just needs to draw another spell, and... Uh... He's going to owl the Lepponome, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. That has to happen to save two damage. I thought he was going to click on the spell power tone there, and I was like, no. You've just seen three spells. You, you shouldn't be clicking on that. And now he, he needs to go face with everything. There's nothing in the deck there. These decks don't normally run Argus or anything. So there's nothing in the deck that's going to buff any of these minions past two health uh, to then uh, be able to attack through and do some extra damage. Hmm, we're not sure if he needed to attack the weapon. He could have got enough charge on. Uh, yeah, but the Shaman's never going to proc that secret, is he? Maybe not. Unless he does it now, and then plays Feral Spirits. Uh, it's whether he's confident enough to hold on for more burn. Unless he's, yeah, just train some Mad Scientist, maybe, and make sure he doesn't get another Explosive Trap, so he kind of reduces the two damage there. And now we can yeah, we start trading and stuff. Slow down the hunter. Just yeah, just slow down the hunter as long as possible. Now wait till you draw a lava burst or a crackle, and hopefully you can close out the game. Yeah, and then with this, the two one ones are probably going to the to. Uh, is he going to the totem? Not going to bother. Guess he doesn't have to, but foul spirit's going to come down, and that's going to be pretty rough. Doomhammer. So he can't quite finish it off just yet. I don't know if he wants to clear out his one of his only means of defense here. Unless he plays Doomhammer and then he hits the two one ones, and then he plays Feral Spirits. And... Yeah, you do that because then the Feral Spirits are going to survive. You'd imagine. Yeah. I'll do this. I'll trade into the Lapinome either way. Yep. That seems pretty good. And then you can hit face. Now, pop the trap. And then you can play Feral Spirits. And you can uh, maybe hit a 1 1. I don't think it really matters. No, not hit a 1 1. No, actually not. Just hit face twice. Take yep. it into 1. Play the Feral Spirits. And now the Hunter needs to win this turn on 1 draw. And it's never going to happen. Nope. Even a Beast uh, wouldn't have uh, won the game there. So, Robin's going to take the next game. Yep, so the Shaman does beat the Hunter. Um, still has the Hunter left, obviously, to relock in again if he so chooses. And then there's uh, the Patron Warrior and the Paladin left for Robin. Uh, so, again, not too difficult of choice. I don't know. I guess you, uh, if you think the Hunter's going to come on next again, you just lock in the uh, Patron Warrior. As that has a really good matchup versus that. So I think that's pretty reasonable to just go Patron now and save the Paladin to last. And a secret Paladin as well, and we know that for sure. Uh, yeah, Patron seems fine. As for Overcast, uh, maybe the Hamlock is what you want to be locking in next, uh, just to get the win off the Patron. If you read, the, if you get a good read on the Patron, you're guaranteed a win. And that's just, uh, you tie it 2-2, and I quite like uh, taking that risk with picking the Hamlock. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, again, at the end, it, it just doesn't really, doesn't really matter, in my opinion, to a certain extent. <laughs> Uh, you can get the better matchup, and I think it's like sort of important to work out what deck you need to fall back on. But between Patron and Paladin, it's like with against this lineup, it's pretty pretty even, I would say. Yeah, mostly. Uh, apart from apart from the Handlock Patron matchup and the Handlock Druid, but the Druid's already gone. No, the Druid's already done yeah. its work. Uh, so what does Overcast has Hunter? Handlock and Paladin. Paladin left. He won with the Druid, right? Oh no, did he win with the Paladin though? I think he won with the Paladin, yeah. yeah so, all oh, right. So Patron Warrior does queue up and it does go into the Face Hunter. Yep. Uh, he's got keeping the whirlwind definitely versus Face Hunter. A lot of the minions are one health, and uh, that play is really nice. He gets the War Axe and then into Acolyte Shredder. So the Warrior's got as uh, not. Not the best hand he could ever get, but pretty damn close, I'd say. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, gets the Shredder as well, which is awesome. Because now he can... Uh, he's got some good minions to fight for board. But uh, the Armor Smith is probably the most important thing with the Whirlwind. Those two cards are going to be able to heal him up, which is great. 
Yep, so it's now working out. I, I don't mind uh, Coin Armsmith here, actually. He, it's a bit weak to another abusive, but other than that, it's fine. Oh, we seem to have... <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. Oh, there. There we, we go. go. I had a I had a plugin <laughs> stop working. I just re uh, reloaded it back up. <laughs> All right. So silence on the armor swift is super important here because that is one of the ways that uh, Robin is gonna swing the game in his favor, gaining all that armor. So yeah, looking. Not, not, it's kind of really back and forth at the moment, which is uh, which is fine as well. Yeah. The only problem is when you're gonna play like say the Wolf Rider now. Um, you know there's automatically an easy answer in the form of just trading the armorsmith away. So it's kind of rough, but uh, we'll see what happens. Huh, where did he go from here? I mean, he could just play bow and swing with a bow. He could develop the worgen, and then he can hero power. So there's that too. Again, get squeezing the hero power and wouldn't be too bad as well as a face hunter. But the bow is fine as well, just squeezing that free damage. Yeah, and then it's equipped, and still next turn he can wolf ride a wargun if he really wants to. So he's still got full mana next turn, depending on what he wants to do, but seems pretty okay. He can now bow down the... Uh, probably... Hmm, it's a tough one. Does he want to bow down the face? Bow down the uh, Acolyte? I don't know. Well, I think the Acolyte was played to kind of say, you need to kill this guy, I'm going to start drawing cards. Yeah. But it looks like Overcast might not even care. That seems like a pretty reasonable assumption. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna give him. No, he does care. He he gives he gets two card draws off the acolyte. Finding another armor smith as well is pretty fantastic. Yeah, and there's death fight as well. So again, I think uh, although on low health, I think Robin might have the cards he needs to take this game. Yeah, I'm. Um... Despite is definitely going to be a big part as well. Gives him another whirlwind effect. If you can get a couple of minions down bo on board with the Despite's proc on the, on its de on this death rattle, you'll definitely gain some armor. And I think uh, Overcast's agenda here. He's not going to trade anymore. He's just going to go for face. So maybe equipping the Despite is pretty important now. I think. Yeah, everything else doesn't really gain too much. I suppose. I suppose he could still Shredder. He has the weapon already equipped, so he can make use of the weapon. He can play Shredder, and then next turn he always has, like, Armorsmith Whirlwind. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Yeah, he's just gone for the Shredder. and Yeah, he can clear the board with the weapon and the minion. Uh, but he definitely wants to be developing that Despite soon. And just so he can get, like, double Whirlwind with the Armorsmith, maybe with the Throbbing as well, would be just so good. Just gain him so much health. Yeah, the second kill command isn't exactly what you want at this point in the game. You're not quite at the stage where you want to just draw a burn. Yeah, so that's kind of rough. Hmm. So, <laughs> double kill command is not great now. Uh, may actually be the, the, the combo he needs to win a little bit later, but with no beast, it's... Uh, not great, is it? Uh, maybe just Worgen Hero Power. I think uh, he's having 28 health. I don't, I don't think he needs to fight for board anymore at this point. Yeah, I think Worgen Hero Power is all he can really do. Anything else, I just don't think it's good enough. I wonder what's going through his head here. Unless he's thinking Worgen Kill Command Face. Well, yeah, Worgen Hero Power is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And there's a patron, okay. So, Armorsmith coming down now with a Whirlwind, which is perfectly fine because he gains two armor, he clears out two damage off the field as well, and he can hero power. So, he gains four health from this play and uh, he eliminates his opponent's side of the board. And this may be a point now where Robin can stabilize a bit. Yeah, and the Scientist isn't really a big card that's going to change anything there. Um, the Armsmith down, like you said, is it's hugely important, and he can just weapon up, armor up, and then patron the turn after and be in a really strong position. Oh, he's going for the kill command face, hero power. So that's going to chip away uh, just over the amount of armor he gained from last turn. But yeah, that's not a winning play right there. 
he just deaths by armor up, smack him in the face, and <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this is looking tough. I mean, Robin's not in close to winning yet, but he's very close to stabilizing. I, you have to silence your armorsmith now. You've got no choice. Yeah, you're never going to win otherwise, and probably yeah, just kill command face because it's the only time you can guarantee having a beast on the board. Um, so there's currently eight, nine damage, uh, ten, eleven damage potentially, uh, but nothing else. Oh, I, do, I imagine we'll just see patron, patron attack now. Why not? Owl was a very good pickup from there. Like Owl was probably the, one of the best draws he could have had uh, to stop any more health gain. Ten health. Nice. It's just gonna armor up. Fair enough. Uh, and now the scientist won't even draw a trap because I think we've already seen one explosive, haven't we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm not. I'm not sure actually. But on the flip side. That's a bit of a whiff draw. Uh, I don't think uh, Robin needs to even t attack at this moment in time. We'll just wait till he gets Grom. Oh, he has Grom, actually. This should just be the win now for him. It's turn yep. 8. So this is it. This is uh, Robin going to be able to take game number 4 here with that like, Grom sitting in his hand. He's considering whether to play the scientist, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Well, I think the scientist is probably the right play from his side. He may as well play the minion, right? Like, yeah. we really lose out. But we can see that Grom's in hand, and that is going to be game over. And Robin takes game four uh, with his warrior, and just has his paladin left to beat this hunter, this druid, and the warlock, which I believe is Zoo, right? Oh, no, no, it's Handlock. No, Sorry. Handlock, for... yeah. Oh, I keep getting mixed up with who's who. Um, yeah, so it we, we is the handlock. So the Paladin's probably got a pretty decent chance to get one of these wins, one of the matchups. There's nothing that's too terrible in a matchup, I don't think. Yeah, and then now he's uh, you know, got a secret Paladin left to go against most of the uh, lineup. And secret Paladin, you know, it's just that deck that everyone loves to hate, uh, which can just squeeze those wins out, much like the Druid. And these are, this is a kind of a popular trend in this tournament so far. People leaving their druids and paladins for last just because of the power of the deck and be able to get those wins yeah and being able to like sit on the the like multiple matches is, is pretty nice um as your last deck it's just a comfortable deck to sit on it should be good for uh, good for robin here it should be fine so for overcast um maybe the handlock is his best line of play here uh, we can have a quick look at the list that's going to be coming from robin here and robin did uh, have some problem Problem, sorry, with uh, this deck originally uh, in his first game, because he lost two games like flat out just because he just drew secrets, which can be a problem with the secret paladin. But overall, the deck is consistent enough uh, that it does uh, it is still very powerful. Yeah, it's gonna. Um, yeah, he's probably got all that out of the way now, though, hasn't he? Probably d dealt with all the bad draws. <laughs> it's, it's out of his just, system. Uh, it's out of his system. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, just dealt with all the bad draws. It's just like, yeah, okay. I mean, this is fine. Um, it's just secret pardon, isn't it? It's gonna, it's gonna have such a high chance as long as it, it can curve well one game. Believe that like any time pardon can actually get curve on, will he'll just, he'll just win. And it looks like the hunter is coming back for a vengeance here. Can Overcast protect his tournament life with a win, or is Robin gonna be facing Roy in the last game? Uh, pretty mediocre start from the hunters. Nothing really. I mean, you probably keep the abusive because it's a one drop. But other than that, there's nothing you're really interested in. Hmm. So, a bit of a clunky hand there for Robin. Uh, Overcast is a lot better, actually. Yeah, it's just tough because none of these are minions or anything you actually want. He's wound up keeping the explosive traps to try and counter the uh, sort of the aggressive starts these paladins can have. But it's definitely a, a rough keep. Yeah, and he just throws everything but the one drop. I like this. There we go. That's more like it. All right. So look at this hand. Uh, a very nice start here. Double one drops leading in here with uh, 
Also a Haunted Creep to back it up and a Wolf Rider, so nice steady curve and also Abusive Sergeant if he needs to start clearing stuff or pushing some extra damage. Yep, getting those two one drops out is super important. Um, the Cog Hammer kind of needs a minion. Um, uh, a mini bot would be insane now. Mini bot oh. would be perfect, but yeah, unfortunately. And repentance is the opposite. It's like from the best card you could have drawn to probably the worst. <laughs> oh, ignoring the 1 1's nice though. It means Cog Hammer's at least going to do something. Yep, Cog Hammer is a card that's got a lot of mileage in this tournament and in Paladins in general. Alright, so yeah, he's going to be able to clear up at least two minions here. Uh, going to be able to keep a taunt as well. Although the Haunted Creeper does deal with a taunt fairly easy. Uh, still, he, he may be able to stabilize just a little bit. But these draws are just so bad. These are the ro these are the Robin draws, right? <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is like reminiscent of the first match he had where he just couldn't make the deck work. But it's not even his fault. It was just the way it was. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Uh, poor Robin draws. Is that going to oh, be a yeah. thing now? Robin draws. Yeah, he gets to Consecrate though, that's a great pickup for him. He gets to clear the board, and uh, then he gets low feb. So from turn 5 onwards, things might start to pick up for him. But on 18 health, turn 4, you know, Hunter can definitely uh, push for the damage here. Yep, I actually uh, think... Mm, he's got the card Hammer down, right? Maybe just Bow. So it's off curve, but maybe it's okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh, you play Knife Juggler Hero Power. Just try and squeeze in that Hero Power as much as possible. Which is uh, a very important part of playing kind of the uh, face and ag the face hunters and the hybrid hunters. Yeah, and he's going to go for it as well. I, I think that's uh, the correct play here. Yeah, this is okay. Just play, uh, putting, the, uh, putting the extra damage on. He, can, uh, he has quick shot next turn. He can get a juggle off for the... Uh, the abusive. Aldo Peacekeeper is going to minimize know, That's going to make the trade a bit nicer, yeah. That's good. Just needs to draw in a... He kind of just needs the Mysterious Challenger, mainly for like competitive spirit and Avenge and stuff to go off. Well, with this Hunter at 28 health and the Paladin already down to 13, so bleak. Like, it's very bleak for him right now. Oh, speak of the devil. Yep, there you go. It is, look, it's Secret Father. Of course he draws it. 5, 10, 6. Caster's Curse happens again. And now, this gives Robin an opportunity to be ag aggressive himself, because he knows, uh, oh, that's a big, that's a good pickup as well, actually. Uh, it's going to be able to uh, stop the, oh, is he going with the Haunted Creeper? That's interesting. Yeah, well, he's he, probably not going to get punished by having extra tokens, right? Yeah, he's seen a Consecrate. Maybe he's uh, just trying to get a bigger board now. Yeah, I, I quite like that, actually. And having multiple tokens is key versus Paladin to be able to one trade away the one ones and also to prop the secrets as in how you want them and uh, have, still have minions to deal with. So Competitive Spirit is going to actually give him... Is he one off? Yeah, it's one off. And now we can trade. Uh, I would trade into the maybe. Yeah, I trade into the one one as well. You can hear a power quick shot next turn and just slow down. So how much damage does he actually have? 10, 14, 16. Blessing of kings. Not going to be enough. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. Yeah, and the other challenger doesn't do it either because he just won't pull enough secrets. Yeah, I don't think Robin has an answer to this, unfortunately. Yeah, and the Conceded is going to come down, and Overcast stays in the tournament. This tournament life is still <laughs> very much alive. And uh, But he still has Handlock, and he has the, Pal the Druid as well. So, no, he's got some good decks going into the next round. Yep, it's still really, de definitely still okay. Uh, that was just a bit of a rough game. Not much you can really do there. Well, as you said, he's got he's got plenty of stuff to deal with. Yeah, the the secret piling is going to be pretty hefty enough. That was that's a rough matchup as well. 
Um, because of the explosives and the unleash, it's definitely harder to make that deck work. And with a bit of the dud draws at the start, it was it was always going to be a tough one. Yeah, the Robin draws are not going to help yeah. that match um, at Robin. all. Those pesky Robin draws. I guess he uh, he hasn't been too happy with the Secret Paladin so far, <laughs> because he just just draws garbage. It's uh, really unfortunate for him. But now yep. this is looking better. Yep, the Druid's definitely a better matchup. And uh, whether to keep hold of the swipe against Paladin, I mean, it's a real tough one. A lot of the time you do want it, because the second you don't keep hold of it, they go muster, turn 3, like 100%. But it's also you keeping hold of a, a card that doesn't do anything if they don't have muster. Alright, Minibot in the opening hand, that's uh, going to be great. It's going against the Druid as well, so it's not going to be kind of a, a rush to survive for Robin going forward. This is, uh, he can actually play a little bit more slowly, a bit more patiently, because he's not afraid of what uh, the Druid kind of just bursting him down quite quickly. Yep, and this is going to be pretty nice. Oh, and he does have muster, wow. The swipe's going to be... Uh... The swipe keep's going to be important now. Well, they kind of expect it these days, right? He gets to ping off the shield as well, so when the master does come down... I might see... We might just see a coin... Oh, it's competitive spirit. Oh, okay. We might see a coin shredder. I think a uh, hero power and a shield off might be enough of a hint that suggests there's a swipe. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah could be nice. Agrees. Yep, this is fine. Good play from Robin there. Uh, good presence of mind to notice that maybe the swipe will be coming down. Yeah, and it means it, because he has another turn four play as well, then it's fine. So, uh, you know, he can bless no kings if he wants to. So it's not like he's got now a dead turn four because he did that. That's not a bad minion. It does challenge the Shredder as well. Hasn't seen the swipe yet, so maybe I'll just go for a, a clear here. Uh, play the mini bot. Yeah, mini bot into hero power doesn't seem bad. Because even if he does swipe now, uh, he still has muster to come back. Oh, he goes to the zombie chair. Yeah, it's a bit more stable. Actually, I prefer that. Yeah, at the moment, he's not really too fussed about the druid's health. He's more just needs to control the board more than anything. That's where the zombie chairs really uh, come into work, their work. Obviously, it's best on turn one. But, uh... But yeah, it seems it's going to do some work. Even just soaking up mini, uh, the mini bots now. Or the boom bots, sorry, not the mini bots. Lofab gets his turn 5 play, but has a deal with Dr. Boom here. Uh, Blessing the Kings and a Murloc will be enough to take him out. Maybe we, maybe even uh, just kill a boom bot as well. I mean, it looks like he's going for that as well. Let's see how that's good. Yeah, Mr. Nice, good use of the Divine Shield. Uh, get rid of another big threat, and uh, it's just about controlling the board here. He's not in a mega rush. He has uh, his own Doctor Boom soon. He need, just needs to drive that mysterious challenger. Finds a big game hunter ready for that Doctor Boom. It's a good draw for Overcast. He may not know it yet, but he will soon. Hmm. So do you throw the? Boom bot into the mini bot first. Kind of see what damage one. it does, and then yes. maybe swipe hero power. Yeah. Oh, there's the chance that you swipe uh, the mini bot, run the boom bot into the two one, uh, and then you know it's got the greater odds of hitting the the mini bot, but it's definitely tough. I think he has an opportunity to clear the board here with swiping hero power, but you may be thinking of developing something himself. But the problem is that with that 6 health and 6 attack, it does challenge the Druid to Claw quite easily. Oh, he's going for the cat. Okay. Okay, he's just ignoring the minion for now, which is still fine. <laughs> Paladin's going to need basically Consecrate to deal with this board nicely. Some nice plays coming up for the Paladin as well. Dot to boom on 7, followed by Tyrion straight away. No silence in Overcast's hand at the moment as well, so things are not looking bad. And he's going to ignore the druid of the close. So they're just ignoring each other. They're just smacking each other in the face. It's super aggressive. Yeah, we know he's still a little bit away from uh, the druid combo there that we normally see, obviously, for turn 9. So 
Probably feeling that he's uh, a bit confident that he's, he's not going to come back anytime soon. It's it for one. Alright. This looks like a Dr. Boom play to me, but Challenge is also really tempting, I think. Yeah, I think Boom's fine, though. Um, the bots are pretty nice. Challenger... The problem with Challenger this late in the game is that Druid can prop the first secret so easily with its own hero power. Yeah, and you kind of want board. Or some form of board when you're playing the Challenger, just so you can spread, like, Avenge about and stuff like that. Just to make the Challenger a lot more effective. But he is considering it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, ch playing Challenger now... Um, Makes his mini bot more threatening, but Doctor Boom, I know it's it's highlighted green on seven. It just seems too tempting to play right now. But do you clear the five five? I guess that's the question. I think you might need to because uh, it's always nice to play on empty board. I think if you clear the five five, you're probably playing the mysterious challenger. Oh no, okay, disagree. Just because you get shut down pretty hard by BGH now. Hmm. I mean, if he, uh, yeah, if he had not cleared the 5-5, five five, uh, swipe would have been decent as well. Just, he needs to decide how he wants to deal with the boom bots. So he got well, hero power for one, and then he can BGH for three, giving him three more mana, and then he could potentially just play a shade, just kind of to soak up any more boom hits. Yeah. Pretty nice. And again, now that it's sort of swung the other way. So whether he goes for Tyrion or the uh, Mysterious Challenger now. Mysterious Challenger hero power wouldn't actually be terrible. I think Mysterious Challenger is fine. Because uh, c because you get to hero power as well, it just makes things a little bit better for uh, for the Avenge. But on the other hand, like Swipe will be an efficient way to deal with it. Oh, that's not what you want to see. Maybe Tyrion now. Yeah, this kind of sucks. <laughs> Maybe Shredder Mustard. Shredder Mustard definitely walks into swipe, but he'll be able to clear the, the big game hunter, which is not too bad. Oh, reasonable top deck. Maybe this and Savage Raw, right? Sets up Lethal next turn. Yeah. That's a very good point. You just savage roll the four six into the Tyrion. Even you could even ignore Tyrion to be fair. I would just ignore him personally. Um, there's not a well, actually no, you might as well uh, because it's not going to be any healing, right? This is not mid range. This is secret power. Then you yeah. definitely attack with the shade at this point. Yeah, you don't waste the damage because you put him seventeen. The odds of him dealing with both minions is pretty low, and if he plays mysterious challenger, you can still punch through it. And he still has all the time in the world as well. He's on 20 health and he has swipe. So it's not like it, it's, it's the uh, combo is the only thing he can do to push through some minions and uh, kill him. Hmm. So Challenger's not looking as appealing anymore. Uh, Belcher, Belcher's definitely looking a lot better with the Shredder. He, he definitely has to keep an eye on combo. Now, you've seen one Savage Road. That doesn't mean there's... Not another one. Oh, another silence as well. Does he have lethal? Uh, I don't believe so. Silent Savage Raw would be uh, six. It would only be 13 with hero power. Wait, um. Well, yeah. He oh, is he just. Oh, he's hang on. He's just working out normal combo, right? Yeah. Oh, he might have the extra minion. So he runs the shade in. Then his then loses his two, but gains two. No, he's one off, right? He's one off, yeah. Where's that living roots when you need it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you can still do it. The secret pardon doesn't run any uh, any heal, and you can just swipe, <laughs> just swipe face or minion to turn after and win. I think, so. yeah, I think silence swipe. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind this either. It's just yeah, I mean, it just at this point it just doesn't really matter. Hero power face. So now, Robin will just lose unless he gets another Belcher. 
I think. I think a belch is the only thing that can uh, that protects him here. Because the face will deal with noble sacrifice. And yeah, so the face will deal with noble sacrifice and the rest of the tokens will be able to finish him off with the minions on board. Yep. And even if he goes for like a knife juggle combo with the mustache, it still won't matter because he still have to use his face to clear up something. And yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be over. So we're gonna see him just play out the uh, the juggler, try and snipe the shade. Is he gonna get the snipe? No, he yeah, he gets it. Not that it, it matters, unfortunately, for Robin, but... No, Overcast, again, another 4-3. You know, we've had 4 threes all the way for this entire day so far. So things are pretty consistent as far as scores are concerned. All these players yeah. are really fighting uh, to stay in this tournament. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy, isn't it? Considering we had, like, some 4 zeros on the... We had two 4 zeros on the first day, a couple of 4 twos as well. But four three has been uh, the kind of the story of this event so far, especially in today. Just going for the motions here, and he's able to tie up the series. It's going to be Handlock versus Secret Paladin for the last game of the series, and then the winner of this will go on to fight uh, Team Celestial's uh, CL Roy, which has probably been one of the players that has impressed us the most so far. Yeah, he's definitely been playing really solid, and he did. Although he did lose in the. Um uh, he lost in the sort of winners final versus uh, Nicholas. It was really close, and he he didn't lose down to his own misplays specifically. It was more just uh, more just with the, you know Hearthstone being Hearthstone, I suppose. Although uh, I would say uh, Roy did have some shaky plays with his druid in one game. I do remember that, but overall, his overall tournament uh, kind of consistency has been very good. Uh, so he's still kind of, I think, a favourite to go into the grand finals here. Uh, but I don't know. Robin's been showing some strength, some good strengths as well as Overcast. You know, he was uh, almost out of the tournament, but he's tied up three three, like most of the matches we've had. To, all the matches we've yeah, had today. Yeah, every single match has been going to four three, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive for these guys. Just taking it every single one as long as possible and hanging in there as much as you can. So fair play. But this is going to be the last decider match. Who goes home? Who's staying in the tournament? Uh, who do you think's got the? F I think Overcast's got a little bit of an edge here with Handlock. If he gets the right, I don't know. Actually, depends how snowbally the secret paladin is, right? Yeah, I um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough one. It's basically what's going to happen is if the challenger comes out on curve and he doesn't have a big shadow flame or big game hunter, then the paladin should just take it. But the issue with paladin is that there's no way to like push through the damage at the, at the end. Unless you have a huge board that they can't answer and they've got no taunts, there's no real way to actually finish the Warlock off. And then the Warlock can just come back, so it's really difficult. Um, so yeah, it's just going to rely on like maybe Molten Taunts versus uh, no BGH. Speaking of Molten Taunt, that was something that was kept in Overcast's Mulligan. So he's identifying that the Paladin doesn't have a lot of burst and he will have to take some risks at some point. And that molten, uh, that molten torch is going to be great. And Hellfire, what a great pickup there for him. Be able to do that muster for battle quite efficiently. Yep, he can just go in straight into Hellfire, and that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yep, coin Hellfire, going to be great. Uh, he is again taking quite a lot of damage here, but the, the trick is that he does have that molten taunt, and the Paladin, although you know. The common thing is for the Paladin not to have an answer, but uh, looking at uh, Robin's hand, he's going to hold on to that equality until something gets taunted up and then punch through like that. So that's going to be pretty important for him. Uh, but the common lists don't actually run equality, so a bit of a difference here over in China. Um, but, you know, good to see uh, one like maybe, it may be more of a tech card than anything to just guarantee an extra bit of burst later on. Yeah, that's a bit of a withdrawal though for Robin. He definitely wanted a 4 drop. Uh, giving health back to the Warlocks not something you're going to be too happy with doing. Uh, so I think Overcast has some decisions he can make here. He can kind of let his health kind of deplete and uh, get that taunt Molten Giant up. Or he could go for a Farseer now and sustain. But I think for Farseer it's just too too easy. Like you get a free free body, it challenges. 
what's on board currently. Yeah. I mean, he could just tap Dart Bomb. Tap Dart Bomb's another... Yeah, if he wants to draw more cards. But getting the 3-3 the free free down, getting a bit of a healing going, I think that's a bit more steady. And Belchers. It's a Treader, which he wanted last turn. Kind of had them drawn in the wrong order there. Drake, that's not bad. Low Feb as well. Nice 5-5 five five to go down. Yeah, pretty reasonable pickup. Can't really argue too much with it. Um, hmm. How much do you just want a low feb here? Well, the low feb does challenge the sludge belcher. And you'll be able to clear it out unless uh, the paladin decides to clear the farce here. Then he's going to have to find something else to clear the token. So, yeah. I, I quite like low feb overall. Just because it can take out sludge belcher next turn. Yeah, and it reduces a lot of the stuff they can do anyway, so... He's, he's definitely a tough one, because Drake looks nice. It's just, a, it's just a bit feels a bit bad on, on the mana. That's all. Avenger is not a, a terrible pickup either. He gets... Also a cog hammer, if he can hit the right target. I mean, he could potentially clear the free free with uh, the two minions here. The two smaller minions, then cog hammer. And then he gets uh, the divine shield on the sludge belcher. Yeah. But he doesn't what get is the follow-up then? Cog hammer, hero power, avenge. Yeah, that, that's one way you can do it. Can, or you can just slam a shredder in the middle, uh, drop an avenge. Not mana efficient either, but uh, or you could just play Aldo. And avenge into hero power. Okay, just keeping the pressure on here. Yeah, I think this is still okay. It's whether he trades into 3-3. Three, three. I don't even mind the trade. I think the trade's okay. If he trades, he stops him from playing Molten Giant next turn. Yeah. Something to consider. The trade's okay, because you've got a lot of damage, and then if he kills something, then... Uh, oh, I, I don't know if I'd trade like this. Maybe this opens up for the Belcher to attack as well, then. Yep, so he can actually... He can't play Molten Giant now. Find some sustain through anti kill bot. But Forasan is going to hit some juicy stuff there. And that Drake is a totem clearer, but while that, uh, not totem, a token clearer, sorry. But while that Belcher is sitting there, uh, he's not going to be doing a lot. Yeah. It's definitely going to be tough. Um, hmm. All right, Cog Hammer seems to be what he's going for. Hopefully, for him, it hits a free free, and it does. Wow, Caster's oh, curse. Nice. <laughs> yep, so he can clear off the uh, Thoris and dodgy Shredder placement, um, but whatever, we'll we'll forget about that for a minute. And yeah, and it just leaves the one eight on the board as well. So now he can just about molt and taunt though. He can molt and taunt Dart Bomb actually now, which is nice. And this is the issue: the Paladin's like. I kind of want to go for it, but I don't have any burst. Although he does have a quality, so maybe that's enough. I think what he's doing here is stopping the Molten heal bot turn. Hmm. So Molten into Sun Fury plays right into Robin's hands with that equality. Uh, he does have heal bots to sustain a little later as, as well. Uh, but he... Maybe he doesn't want to commit to that just yet. Oh, the Avenge as well, that's true. Oh, Belcher gets hit. 6-7 Belcher. So maybe the Owl's worth. Or oh, Siphon Soul, maybe? Yeah, maybe you could Owl the Belcher and then uh, play Healbot. He's only got one Owl in his deck, and uh, Tyrion could be something uh, you'd want to hit later on. Because Tyrion is a card that can give you a bit of burst damage. You have 15 damage with your weapon on three turns. Uh, I don't mind Siphon Soul, but he's actually just going to slam a low feb. I don't know if I like that. Oh, he gets to go for the owl. Okay, as long as he goes for the owl, yeah, low feb on its own would have been good. Yep, this is okay. 
maybe he's trying to bait out the uh, the equality here. A seven mana equality. Oh, look at that! All spells. Uh, his most efficient turn is noble sacrifice into hero power, but uh, it's not exactly efficient because of the low febs effect. Yep, yeah, it's kind of rough that you can't even play the Blessed of Kings, to be honest. Looks like he's just going for what only seems like his only play at the moment. And now, the question is, do you trade or do you take a risk? It is This is the problem, and this is why the matchup is actually fairly difficult for the Paladin. You kind of, you, you want to just go for it, but it's hard. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, at some point you have to just turn on the heat and go for it. He has equality though. He so does. although he can heal but for eight and clear away, say, the Belcher, there's a Venge down, right? So there's still options. So we're going to see Molten, Healbot, uh, what else? It's gonna be. He's got four. Probably, well, taunt up and then uh, dart bomb. I guess on the shredder. Maybe he should dart bomb the shredder first. Actually, no, it's not no. gonna dart bomb. Maybe tap. Heal bot. If he draws consecrate, Robin, it punishes this so hard. Yeah, I mean the Molen Healbot was always going to happen though. There's no, there's no world in which you don't play those cards at this point in the game. It does just get a two three, which is fairly safe. Drops the Healbot, and uh, maybe you can get away with not taunting. Maybe that's the trick. Because well, how much damage is he really going to do? He can do that like, eight most. Yeah, there's no, not a lot of burst coming from him. Equality, it's going to come down. Clear. A fair bit of the board, but there's going to be there's going to be some stuff left. Yeah, I guess a board clear followed by a shred of hero power. Yeah, this is going to be pretty okay. So now this is an opportunity for Overcast to come back in this game. He gets a good draw. Oh, can't quite play that. Gets another draw. Uh, so, just doesn't feel good, does it? No. Do you siphon soul? Maybe you BGH and then uh, and then Argus and then trade like this. Okay, so he's saving the BGH um, for the boom, I guess. But it just doesn't feel good. <laughs> Ah, oh, another withdraw here. So if he does play Redemption, he can't doesn't really want to hero power. But if you don't hero power, you tell your opponent what secret it is. I guess your opponent's gonna attack face anyway, though, right? Just test the secret. Yeah, that's true. Yep, he can't make it too obvious here, and he does. Chuck the blessing of kings, so kind of all in here for Robin, and that siphon soul is going to be fantastic here. He's going to be able to chew up that five five, no problem. And he gets an opportunity to tap as well, so test the secret. I mean, do you just play the mountain giant? Well, maybe actually. I think you have four health. He has to top deck true silver. Like, why wouldn't you just play mountain giant there? Redemption feels bad. So if you can survive this turn, which you probably will, then Malganis is going to do some work. And Creeper is definitely not the card Pardy wanted to draw here. Holy hell. Um, that's a bit rough. Where, where is big guys? Have we, we've, we've not even seen a mysterious challenger yet, have we? Not one challenger, Dr. Boom, or Tyrion. He this plays, is a tournament plays Divine life. Favor as well, right? I'm sure yeah, he does. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah, yeah. Divine Favor would be pretty nice. Oh man, that's such a good draw. Gets a lineup, a taunt. And now you can just hit face, right? And just put pressure on him or does he need to clear 
Uh, he's seen the equality, so he's not expecting another one. Uh, there's probably no BGH, so... Maybe you clear one, because it makes uh, it makes him need... Um, consecrate over muster, but muster it means he has to hit for face anyway, so... Maybe, yeah, you just go face and not care. Alright, this could be this could be Robin's last draw here. Competitive spirit. Well, he'll be able to survive on one health if he clears the Argus. And that's why you have good <laughs> That's why you have good shredder placement, guys. I mean we've seen a a lot of these Asian players not even take shredder placement into consideration, but uh yep, sometimes it does that. <laughs> it's, sometimes it does that and you clear an entire giant. But you get Shadow Flame here, which is great. So you can hit the... What secret was it? Competitive. So you can hit yeah. the Totem and Shadow Flame. But he doesn't know what secret it is. Now it's just testing. See, because if it was Avenge, that actually changed stuff. Because uh, it could have gone on to the... Uh... Oh, no, it no have we changed. should have hit the Totem. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't have actually changed much. Give you a maybe, the maybe, no, no, uh, maybe it's hmm, six, seven, eight, no. maybe he has he... lethal if he doesn't clear something else. Uh, maybe he just plays Mount Ganis and relies on no silence. I would probably BGH Shadow Flame here. He should have hit the totem, I think. Because if it was Avenge, it wouldn't have propped and he could have Shadow Flamed. If it was Noble Sacrifice, it wouldn't have mattered. If it was Redemption, uh, it's going to Redemption a 1-1 one, one, as far as I know. It's this trade is still awkward. It means he has to trade the whole board in. Um, no, no, sorry, just the two minions. And Minibot's a bit dead. He can poke for one, um, but then he can do the Shadow Flame play. And then uh, make that do some work. The Minibot's going to be a bit of a pain to actually hurt, so maybe he has to trade and then do BGH Shadow Flame. I really need to just get this mountain giant down. Yep, so he gets to clear the board now with BGH Shadow Flame, but he needs to draw something else to go with it. Oh, I'll do. BGH Shadow Flame, clear the t you clear the, the shield off, you play your 3-4, four, your four, and then you hope for the best going forward. He should have Shadow Flame the previous turn. Uh, because he wouldn't be in the situation, uh, all all the all Robin would have is a shield, the mini bot, and a token, and then he could play Malganis, and then what would Robin do? He'd just be stuck. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't be great. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, surely just attack the mini bot, uh, BGH, Shadow Flame, play Void Caller, at least have something on the board, right? Yep, that's basically all you've got here. You can't really tap. Um, because he won't be able to make that full play. Clock is ticking. Come on over, Cass. You need to make a decision here. Wait, what? Why I mean, it does only leave two damage on, but it, do you care about your own two damage when you're the one with it? I would rather a 3-4 on an empty board than a 2-2 two, two, or 3-4 versus a 2-2. Two, two. And, and there's Mysterious Challenger. And now know. things completely change, so... Yeah, that's... Is that just game? What, what can he draw? Draxus. So he trades the 2-2 two, two with the other 2-2 two, two now? So then Voidcaller has to run in? Voidcaller runs in, procs all the secrets, then you've got nothing. Yeah, and that's not it. Mm, no, rough. and that is it. So, yeah, Robin takes it. He clutches it out, and Overcast does lose. So, Robin will be going into the losers' uh, final against Roy in yep. the next game. Yeah, that's going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's